Welcome to Lecture Online, another example for you on Bernoulli's equation. And here we have a house. Let's say that the house has a roof with a surface area of about 200 square meters, which is a typical size house, I suppose. And let's say that there's a very strong wind blowing, like a hurricane, wind speed 100 miles per hour. What does that do to the roof? Well, again, remember that any fluid flow, in this case it could be air flowing over the roof very quickly, moving at 100 miles per hour, if the velocity increases, the pressure decreases, which causes less pressure to exist above the roof than inside the house. And that would cause a force, a pressure pushing the roof up. And of course, we're going to try and calculate the force that will be acting on the roof, trying to push the roof off the house. All right, so first what we're going to do is we're going to find the pressure difference between the outside and the inside. And for that, we need, we need Bernoulli's equation. So P1 plus rho G Y1 plus one half rho v1 squared, here I used the letter y for height, that's okay, uh, is equal to p2 plus uh, rho g y2 plus one half rho v2 squared. All right, so let's try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, well, we need a one and a two, let's call one outside and let's call two inside the house. Now, inside the house, I would assume that we have atmospheric pressure. So the question is, what will be the pressure outside the house? And you'll find that when we do the calculation, it's probably less than the pressure inside the house, so it'll be less than the atmospheric pressure. Okay, what about the height? Would there be any difference in the pressure due to the height here versus the height above the roof? Now, we're talking about air, and here, air has very low density. It's only about 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter, and a few meters of difference in height makes very little difference as far as pressure in the air. So we could probably ignore these two terms right there. We can probably just get rid of those two terms, saying that it's virtually the same on both sides of the equation. Now, the velocity of the air inside the house, assuming the winds are closed and the air is, is stationary there, we can assume then zero velocity of the air inside, so we can call that zero, that disappears, and now the only thing that's left here from Bernoulli's equation is that P1 uh, plus, plus one half rho V1 squared is equal to P2, and so I want to know the difference between P1 and P2, and I believe that P2 will be bigger than P1, so I'm gonna move P1 over here. So we can then say that one half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 minus P1. That would be the difference between the pressure outside and inside, assuming that P2 is bigger than P1. Moving that, maybe just turn the equation around, so we have P2 minus P1 is equal to one half rho V1 squared. So the force that the roof will experience will be a result of the difference in the pressure between the outside and the inside. So knowing that by definition pressure is equal to force times area, we can then say that force will be equal to pressure times area. And in this particular case, it will be the difference of the pressure. So we can say that force will be the difference in the pressure times the area. And if the pressure inside is greater than the pressure outside, the force, of course, will be directed against the roof from the inside out, trying to blow the roof off. Basically, that's what happens in hurricanes when very strong winds blow over houses. There's less pressure on the outside and the roof has a tendency of being pushed off from the extra pressure of the air inside as compared to the outside. All right, so we're not done yet. We need to calculate what that is. So this is equal to one half times the density of the air, which is about 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter times the velocity squared. Now, <clears throat> the velocity was expressed in miles per hour. We have to convert that to meters per second. So, first conversion, we have to go to meters versus miles. And one mile is 1,609 meters. And then we have to convert from hours to seconds. So we have seconds here, we have hours there. One hour is 3,600 seconds. So when we make that conversion, we convert from miles per hour to meters per second. So 100 times 1609 divided by 3,600, and it gives us 44.7 meters per second. All right, that number then has to go in here for velocity, 44.7 meters per second, and we square that, and now we're ready to calculate the pressure difference between the outside and the inside. All right, so we square that number, we multiply the times 1.29, and then we divide by two, 
And what do we get? Uh, 1,288, 1,288 pascals. That's the same as newtons per square meter. And you say, well, that's not a lot of pressure difference because remember that atmospheric pressure, P atmosphere, was equal to 101,300 pascals. And so this is just a little bit over 1% the atmospheric pressure. Just a 1% difference could make that much of a difference, but actually it can because, now let's go ahead and figure out the force. And again, using this equation right here, we can say that the force is equal to the change in the pressure times the area. The change in the pressure we just found to be 1,288. And so let's just put newtons per square meter down. That's the same as Pascal's. And the area we said was 200 meters squared. All right, that means the meter squared cancels out and we're left with newtons. So times 200 newtons is equal to uh, 200 square meters, I should say. Now this becomes 257,700 newtons. Well, most of us are not <clears throat> all that familiar with newtons. So can we convert that to pounds? And if I remember right, the... Uh, <clears throat> The conversion from newtons to pounds, I believe it's 4.48 pounds per newton. That may be slightly off, but that's okay. It's close to that. So, um, oh, no, no. It's the other way around. The other way around. Ah, that's not quite right. I think it's coming back to me. All right, so we still need pounds in the top and newtons at the bottom. One pound is 4.48 newtons. I think it's that way. All right, so let's take that number and divide by 4.48. And if we do that, let's look at that. That gives us a force of about 57,500 pounds of force. So that's quite significant. So imagine a 100 mile per hour wind blowing over a, a rooftop of a house. Let's say the area is about 2, 000, uh, 200 square meters you'll have a force pushing up on the roof from the inside of the house of 57,500 pounds. And unless that roof is attached really strongly to the house, that roof is gonna blow off. And I'm sure that in areas where there's a lot of strong winds like hurricane type winds, there's special ways in which the roof needs to be connected to the house. I'm sure there's certain building codes to make sure that the roof doesn't blow off because once the roof blows off a house, the house has very little structural strength and the rest of the house will just go. So for a house to be able to survive very strong winds, definitely that roof needs to stay connected to the house with very strong anchoring. But anyway, there you can see that this is a very good example of Bernoulli's equation in action.